just thinking about you being an eight-year-old looking at Einstein's – the photograph of Einstein's desk, that's amazing. Yeah. I love stories like that. I love origin stories because mm -hmm. I've always wondered with someone like you. Yeah, well, that changed my life. And then when I was in high school, I decided to take it one step further. And it just, I decided to build an atom smasher, a particle accelerator in my mom's garage. <laughs> so I assembled uh, 300 pounds of transformer steel, uh, 22 miles of copper wire, and I assembled a 6 kilowatt, 2.3 million electron volt beta -tron particle accelerator in my mom's garage. In high school? In high school, right. Wow. Every time I turned it on, I would blow out every single circuit breaker in the house. <laughs> it consumes six kilowatts of power. My poor mom comes home, and he, she hears this pop, pop, pop sound as I blow out every circuit breaker in the house. And she must have said to herself, why couldn't I have a son who plays baseball? Why not basketball? And why, why can't he find a nice Japanese girlfriend? <laughs> How come he builds these machines in the garage? <laughs> well, that machine got me accepted to Harvard, and that began my career. That began my career as a theoretical physicist. What were you able to do with that machine? Uh, well, I was able to create a magnetic field of 20,000 ga 10,000 gauss. That is 20,000 times the Earth's magnetic field. <laughs> if you got too close to my machine, it would pull the fillings out of your teeth. Really? Yeah. So you had to be very careful. What about objects that are close Scissors to it? Scissors and things would Hammers. Just fly, fly in yeah. the air, right? So you had to be very careful coming oh next to my machine. <laughs> oh, my God. So in like c compare that to like, – you can't even go near um, one of those uh, scanners, those MRI machines, right? Magnetic yeah. resonance that's imaging. That's right, MRI. You can't have any metal near those, right? Yeah, but that's right. nothing like that. About 10,000 Gauss, too, about the oh, same they... magnetic field as my machine. Oh, okay, okay. So my machine is comparable to the machines that you see in the hospital today. Wow. That's crazy. And you built that when you were in high school. That's right. Do you, is that a photo of it? Well, that's a photo of one of those? Yeah, that's the photo of it right there. You see on the left, you can see mm -hmm. that's 22 miles of copper wire. Mm -hmm. uh, on the, You see the capacitor bank, a cloud chamber on the right where I photographed antimatter. <laughs> Because that was the whole experiment, to ex play with antimatter. Wow. And yeah, the, the cables are hooked up, and you, it's hooked up to six kilowatts that comes out of the wall socket, drained every single ounce of power from my mom's garage. <laughs> wow. Yeah, look at, look a, at young yeah. Michio. Look at you, you handsome fella. Uh, well, that's the Betatron particle accelerator. That's Two, amazing. 2.3 million electron volt generator of electrons. So you were were able to photograph antimatter with that? Uh, well, with the cloud chamber, yes, I was able to photograph the tracks of antimatter, uh, tracks of positrons or anti-electrons that are emitted from uh, sodium-22. And I proved that it was antimatter because they bent the wrong way in a magnetic field. <clears throat> Ordinary electrons should bend clockwise. These bent counterclockwise in a magnetic field. That oh. proved conclusively that it was antimatter that I was photographing. Wow. How old are you at the time? Oh, it's about 17. <laughs> <laughs> I was so dumb. When I, well, I'm pretty dumb now, but it was so dumb when I was 17. <laughs> That's amazing that you were spending your time doing this. Right. I was listening to Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like I said, I was chasing after this dream uh, of an eight-year-old child wondering, is there a theory of everything? It's an amazing dream. Uh, yeah. Well, now, when where did you get the designs for this? Oh, well, um, these designs come from an X-ray machine uh, done by Donald Kirst, uh, who was one of the inventors of the Betatron. And so a lot of the groundbreaking work was done by him. And now they're incorporated in most hospitals. Most hospitals have, have one uh, that, do, that creates X-rays oh. for, uh, for patients. So was there a <clears throat> schematic online that you duplicated? Did you devise this yourself? Uh, yeah, no, there was a, um, a schematic online. I mean, not, there was no line back then uh, oh, in the of library. Course, online. Excuse yeah. Uh, in the library, there was a, a, a schematic, but I had to fill in the details. I had to do the equations to calculate how many turns of wire, how many 
gauss. I needed 10,000 gauss in order to bend tracks uh, of 2.3 million electron volts. All the calculations had to be done ahead of time to make sure it would work. <laughs> Isn't it funny that the universe is so common, that, or excuse me, the internet rather, so common common that I automatically for a second forgot that we were children yeah. when you were younger than me or when you were younger. Uh, That's right. There was no internet. There was no internet at all. Nothing it was online just books. back then. It was right. just books. It was and just books. So you had to have a real hunger for information to go and seek this stuff out. That's right. Did Look, you have any particular high school teachers that were influential or inspirational? Well, fortunately, I grew up in Palo Alto, which is now ground zero for Silicon Valley. So luckily, there were other physicists in the area because they worked for varying associates and different electronics companies. So it wasn't a total vacuum. I was able to get advice, uh, especially in the magnetic field and the, uh, the, the cloud chamber and also the... Um, the vacuum tube that contained the, the particles that I was accelerating. It was good to have real physicists there uh, in Palo Alto because of that fact. Oh, that's amazing. So did you, were they willing to consult with you and discuss this with uh, you yeah, as a high school Yeah, in general, student? right. So I would talk to them about how to build the magnetic field and to calculate using Maxwell's equations the, uh, the geometry of the, of the particle accelerator. So, uh, yeah, I would go and visit these physicists because Palo Alto was, was to become... Ground zero for Silicon Valley. It's a, such a fascinating image of seeing this one super genius physicist who's teaching classes get a visit by a teenage super genius physicist. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, he's one of us. <laughs> it yeah, catch well, you when you're a teenager. That's very as, interesting. As soon as I talked to them, he immediately knew what I was doing. So they would right. help me. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. 